Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith and welcome to my review of last night's episode of The Bachelorette. Last night's episode left me feeling empty. It left me feeling sad. I was reaching for a Kleenex and I didn't know what to do and I think you all know what I'm talking about. It wasn't too long into the episode when we had the rose ceremony and one by one she was picking different guys but there was one name that wasn't called. Diggy! Diggy got sent home! His bow tie, his glasses, his sharp suit, he got to stepping. Diggy on his way out says, oh, I'm going to miss seeing her. I'm going to miss being around her. He's just going to miss her. My dreams of having an Iggy, Diggy, two-on-one date were shattered. The dream ended before it started. Diggy, for you, my fallen homie. Anyways, I'll have to clean that up after. So last night's episode was not very entertaining from my perspective because there was so much whining. We had Kenny whining and we had Lee whining and all these people going back and forth with the whining. Too much. At no point were any of these guys really interested in Rachel but just these silly feuds that they built inside the house. So whining aside, let's talk about last night's episode. Rachel went on a one-on-one -on -one date with a nice guy by the name of Dean. I, th I liked Dean, I had no problem with him, but I felt bad for him, you know why? Because Rachel got Dean to tell a story that was very sad, talking about the fact that he lost his mother to cancer. That his mother looked him in the eyes and said, to answer the question, when are you coming home? And she said, never. It's not an easy thing to go through, take my word for it. And was Rachel there comforting him? Nope. She was sitting there like a psychiatrist, just taking it all in. Now I appreciate that The Bachelorette and The Bachelor are not supposed to say I love you and express those types of emotions. But you can't tell me that they can't, you know, express some sort of human emotion in terms of being there for them, give them a hug or something. Not a great moment for Rachel in my eyes. I've said it before and I'll say it again. When you meet someone, sure you want to impress them and you want them to find you appealing and attractive, but they gotta put up something too. And in that regard, Rachel didn't really put up anything in that scene. So let's just say that my favorite bachelorette of all time, Jillian Harris, her title is still intact. Now moving on from that, we went on this wonderful group date and the guys are on the boat and it's like, Rachel sit on top of me and I'll do push-ups and I'll do some freestyle rap and it's all fun. And they thought, if they thought that was it, they would have been fine. Unfortunately, they had to go on to a spelling bee. Now you wouldn't think a spelling bee would be that difficult, but you would also think a guy like Kenny would be able to spell champagne. Nope. Champ spell champagne. Champagne? -a? No, you gotta sit down. It was so embarrassing. They were giving them these words which weren't necessarily overly difficult and they couldn't spell it. Like if you want to have coitus with a woman, you better be able to spell coitus. But it was funny though, cause the cause the one guy, Josiah, Josiah, let's go with Josiah. His word he had to spell stunning. Okay, listen. If you couldn't spell stunning, there'd be problems. I was expecting him to come out and say R-A-C-H-E-L, stunning. And that would have been gotten him some cute points. But again, these guys thinking in the box, he actually spelled the word. Anyways, we went back to the house and then of course all the drama ensued and all this nonsense. And if you look at scenes from next week, it looks like Kenny's got a cut. But I don't fall for these bachelorette scenes from next week traps. Because for all we know, he cut himself, you know, clipping his eyebrows or something. Until I actually see something go down, I'm not going to jump to any conclusions. Too many red herrings with this show. Couple of observations. Do you notice, first of all, how Rachel kisses some of the white guys versus how she kisses the black guys? Like, when she's kissing the white guys, it is full-on passion. Take my tongue and do with it what you will. But when she's kissing the black guys, it's very soap opera pecs. I'm going to go out right now and say that I think at the end of the episode, white guys getting picked. That's who she's going to end up with. That's not a good thing. That's not a bad thing. It's just a thing. I'm just going out and predicting it. That's what I think is going to happen. But it also begs the question, if I'm right and that does happen, does that mean the next Bachelorette is going to be your brother? I don't know. Interested to see. Episode didn't do anything for me. There was no Diggy. Oh, and Iggy. Okay, listen, maybe Diggy's good to be gone because Iggy's a whiner. Iggy's like such a capital whiner. Guy's not even going around saying, hey, get to know me. Let me tell you about me. He's like going and tattletailing. He's such a, ugh, I can't stand that. Can you imagine being around somebody who's just such a little weasel? That's you, Iggy. You didn't deserve to be around Diggy.
Anyways, what did you think of last night's episode? Let me know. CFL underscore fan on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Witty Whittier and Witty Whittier.com. Thanks so much for checking this out. We'll see you next week.